Assalamu alaikum class. In this lecture, we will discuss problem number 10.5a from William Zaka Bettner book, Financial and Managerial Accounting. In this particular lecture, we will discuss how to record the entries that are related to interest expense and interest payable on bonds payable. So let's begin with the Excel sheet. This is the problem 10.5. A. So, in this problem, the company obtained authorization to issue 20 years bond with a face value of 10 million. So, 10 mil uh, million amount is uh, uh, involved in bonds payable. Uh, the bonds are dated on May 1st, 2011 and have a contract rate of 10%. Uh, rate of interest 10 percent they pay interest on a semi-annual basis that is on november 1st and may 1st the bonds were issued on august 1st 2011 at 100 plus three months accrued interest what does this 100 mean this means that $100 bonds are issued at 100 which means that the company is, uh, has issued uh, the bonds on uh, face value, neither on premium nor on discount. So issued at par. First uh, entry, uh, basically journal entries are required. So first entry uh, is on August 1st, 2011 to record the issuance of bond. August 1st, 2011. So in this case, uh, when the company issued bond, company will get cash. The cash will be on the debit side and the company record liability on credit side. So bonds payable is on the credit side and interest on that bond bonds interest payable will also be recorded on the credit side so bonds the amount of bonds payable is 10 million and interest on that 10 million will be calculated as 10 million Multiply by rate of interest, which is 10%. And interest, a bond interest payable is for three months. From uh, here, you can see that from bonds are dated on May 1st. So from uh, May, June, July, three month interest is recorded now. So we will multiply this by three divided by 12. So the interest will be two lakh fifty thousand dollars or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So cash is ten thousand two fifty thousand dollars. This is the first entry. The second entry is on November first, twenty eleven, to record the first semi-annual interest payment on the bonds. So first semi-annual payment. November 1st, 2011. So first of all, uh, this uh, bond's interest payable will be decreased and will be recorded on the debit side. Bond's interest payable amount is $250,000. Then uh, basically this Bonds interest payable belong to the months of May, June, July. Now from August, September and October, three month interest expense will be recorded. So in bonds, interest expense will be recorded on the debit side. The amount is same, six uh, total. Six month interest 
is going to be paid. So that's why cash will be recorded on the credit side by $500,000. So this payments belong to uh, semi-annual payment. This is the semi-annual payment. Then again, December th 31st, to record interest expense accrued through year end. So this is the existing entry. Existing entries is required on December 31st, 2011. And how many months are involved? November and December. Two months are in between because the payment, uh, semi-annual payment is done on November 1st. Then the complete month of November and for the complete month of December, adjusting entry is required. So adjusting entry will be bond, interest, expense on the debit side and bond, interest, payable is recorded on the credit side. So two months amount is required or two month interest expense is required. Uh, here it is the calculation. 10, 000, uh, 10 million is the bond payable amount multiplied by rate of interest, which is 10%. And this person, uh, uh, this 10% means uh, this 10% per represent 12 months. And as we are calculating interest for two months, so we will convert this annual interest into two months. So the two month amount is 166.66 thousand dollars. So here 166.667 dollars. And then on May 1st, 20. 12 to record the other or the second semi-annual payment. So on May 1st, 2012, second payment is required. Now what we are going to do, uh, first we will pay this bonds interest payable which we have recorded on 31st December. So bonds interest payable then we will record interest expense for the remaining month, remaining four months from January, February, March, and April. Fourth month uh, interest expense is required. So bonds, interest, expense, and then cash will be on the credit side. So this, uh, as we know, there's this amount represents two months interest expense. So 166667 dollars. And then we record other four month interest. Total bonds amount is 10 million. We multiply it with the rate of interest, which is 10%, which represent a complete year interest or annual interest. So we will convert this into four month interest so multiply by 12 uh, multiply by four divide by 12 so this uh, 333000 this represents uh, interest expense for four month and total payment is total semi annual payment is 500000 dollars so this was the journal entries to record uh, interest as well as bond what was the prevailing market rate of interest on the date that the bonds were issued? So, the as we know that the bond were issued on par, par value. This means that the market rate of interest and the rate on bonds both are same. There is no difference in these two rates. So, that's it from this problem, from this lecture. Take care class.